Hello and welcome to Talking Football. After the winter break, we are back with all the action taking place in European football. Monday, as usual, is the day we deal with Europe English football. This time, not the Premier League, but the FA Cup. And here with me to do it are football analysts Amit Leventhal and Michael Friedman. And we'll talk about Manchester United, who may be through to the fourth round, but with a terrible performance. It was much easier for Man City and Arsenal. And Leicester and Tottenham, the two surprising teams in the Premier Leagues, are hoping to do the same in the FA Cup. All this and much more coming up. Let's get started. We begin with the cup holders and Premier League leaders. Arsenal hosted Sunderland and seemed to be in trouble early on, but they were quick to react. The visitors took the early lead through Jermaine Lens before the Gunners scored three of their own. Joel Campbell, Aaron Ramsey and Olivier Giroud were on target. Arsenal win 3-1 and move on. Manager Arsene Wenger is happy with the result and also with the performance. We were a bit shocked by being 1-0 down. It took us a while to find our game because we had a completely reshuffled midfield. And after that, slowly uh, in the second half, uh, uh, we took over, played in their half and uh, scored Aye. great goals, I think, and created many chances. I mean, as, as difficult as it may say, it looks good for Arsenal. I mean, they're, they're through in the Champions League, they lead the Premier League, they're, they're on in, in, in the FA Cup. I know for, for the fans, they, they, they have a hard time, and yet it looks good so far. It looks good so far, but I think the real test starts now. They have. You know, a, a tough run of games coming up, uh, beginning in midweek, you know, Liverpool away. Uh, then they have some other big clashes, Man United, Chelsea, even Leicester, uh, Tottenham. So, you know, the big test is now because, you know, everybody is expecting Arsenal now to fail and, and you know, the, the results not to be as good as they were until now. And, and uh, you know, they, they should deal with big pressure coming up. And, and Michael, we've seen Arsenal in the past, not always dealing very good with pressure. Maybe it, it's finally changing. We see Giroud scoring, Campbell scoring, Sanchez when he's not injured. There seems to be a lot of commotion. Yes, this, this could be the good chance for them. But once again, consistency. It, it, we go year and year again. We see it, the Arsenal team looking like they're going to go far, and then they struggle. The fact that they won the FA Cup the past two years, this could be a great opportunity for them to win a third one. And obviously, you know, with that motivation of, of doing well in the FA Cup, maybe they'll be able to bring that also into the Premier League. You know, they're only three points above Man City in the table. And, and City, you know, have underperformed so far. They only have one away win in, in, since September. So, you know, taking into consideration all this fact, they, they should, you know, even ask a step up. Even though until now they're, they're top of the league, they, they still need to improve. Big That's... If, if they want to take the, the, you know, to win titles. Big test indeed coming up for Arsenal for Arsene Wenger. Leicester and Tottenham are the two surprising teams in the Premier League so far, but only one of them will make it to the fourth round of the FA Cup. Who will it be? We will have to wait until next week for the answer. Leicester, who led the Premier League for most of the season so far, was agonizingly close to making it as they were up 2-1 in White Hart Lane. But Harry Kane scored a dubious penalty just before stoppage time, sending both teams for a replay. Leicester manager Claudio Ranieri is obviously disappointed, but he still finds the positive notes. We are frustrated because uh, our second half was uh, very good, very calm and defend very well. That's OK. Now another match, we replay. And I'm so glad to give them another chance to my eight players are in use to play consistency. I mean, they also meet also in White Hart Lane on Wednesday in the Premier League and then next week in, in the replay. Makes you wonder if, if prepar how do you prepare and also makes you wonder about the system of replays. Yes. This could have been done with overtime and penalties. Yeah, I think, you know, in the Premier League and in England, there are too, too many games and it seems that more and more managers and, and uh, you know, people at boards and, and stuff agrees on, agree on that. So... Uh, I, I think they're missing games in England. There's also exactly, a you don't and you don't need the replay. It's too too many games and and the replays. You know, if you want to add to the drama when you have a draw and then you need to wait ten days, I think the best drama is you know that you know this day will be one of the teams you know will go through one, but if you have draw and replay, you know it's it's it a little bit you know diminish the I think uh, the drama and yeah and I really. Fancy, you know, one game, one off, and you know, the winner takes it all. 
it's that's how cup should work anywhere that's that's what you know what, what i think it seems to be like the the, the way the, the cup is destined to be but as we said tottenham and leicester will play next week in the replay there's only one team who still has a chance of winning four titles this season manchester city are in the semi-final of the league cup they're through to the second round of the champions league and they're strong in the race for the premiership they did not face real trouble in qualifying to the fourth round of the fa cup either the Citizens won 3-0 in Norwich, Aguero, Iannaccio and De Bruyne scoring for the visitors. Manager Manuel Pellegrini is already setting his sights on Wembley. I said that uh, if you want to have a winning mentality, an ambition mentality, I think that you must try to be involved in all the competition till the end. It's the, just the first step of FA Cup, but we know that it's a beautiful, a beautiful, a beautiful competition that finished semi-final and final in Wembley and we are going to try to continue. Michael, uh, Pellegrini speaks about Wembley, about the, the challenges of this team. There's one thing which he, he denies to speak about every time, and that's the Guardiola cloud that's over his head. How can he function when, I mean, yeah, we do not know yet officially, but everybody seems to know that Pep Guardiola will be replacing him. Even if he wins four titles, Pep Guardiola will come in. Well, Manuel Pellegrini... It happened in Munich with three titles. It would be insane if it happens, but Manuel Pellegrini is keeping his head on straight. He's just motivating his players. He still believes that all the players are, are working for him, and he's not getting into the whole Pep you know, drama. Obviously, it would be a huge surprise if he manages to win the Champions League, win the Premier League, and then Pep comes in and replaces him. It would be really strange to see. But once again, you know, Pep is an is a ideal candidate for this, this team. And last year, we almost saw... Uh, Manuel Pellegrini almost getting sacked, you know, just falling just behind Chelsea. So, in this industry, it's really tough for these coaches. I have nothing but admiration for, for Pellegrini, you know. Imagine Jose Mourinho, you know, in his seat, you know, and people know that you know, in the summer he's gone. He would go nuts, you know, he will attack the media, attack everybody, and he's staying calm, you know, managing the situation very Fire well. The doctor, maybe, who knows? <laughs> yeah. And he, you know, he has this, uh, you know, enormous bench and squad that he can pick from, and, you know, you don't hear many players, you know, you know, complaining there, so he's doing a good job, you know. Of course, maybe, you know, the, tactically speaking, he's not the best or the sharpest of all managers, but he's doing a great job, you know, keeping keeping them tight and, and focused on... on yeah, I don't know how many titles they, they will win, but um, last time Pep Guardiola, you know, si you know, signed in, in Bayern Munich half a year before uh, the season ended. You know, he they finished, you know, ended up uh, the season, you know, winning all the titles. So I think Guardiola is very anxious to see City not doing so well this season. <laughs> Interesting to see what happens yeah. there in the summer. And while Manchester City can still win four titles this season, Manchester United looks like a team that will not win anything. Yes, they are through to the fourth round of the FA Cup, but there was nothing happy about this victory. Just a little relief. The bottom line is, Manchester United are through to the fourth stage of the FA Cup, but manager Louis van Gaal knows this is the only good thing there is to say. We have to win today. There's no escape. No, we have won. So the result is all right, but the performance was not all right. The latest poor performance of the Red Devils were showcased once again in the FA Cup as Manchester United struggled against Sheffield United. The visitors from the third division knew very well that Van Gaal's team are struggling to score against tough defensive teams. Obviously we know that if we can frustrate teams and let teams just keep passing the football and nullify the, the chances, then that frustration can build. Whether you like it or not, it's, it's not as easy to break teams down at times if they're organised. And I thought we were, we were organised on that. And frustration can then set in around the stadium. And obviously that was one thing that we were looking to endeavour to do. Everything indicated we were heading for a replay, this time in Sheffield. But just before the final whistle, the breakthrough finally came. Memphis Depay was brought down in the area and Wayne Rooney made sure not to let a golden opportunity go away. Manchester United came out victorious, winning 1-0. We have won, and that's the most important thing in an uh, FA Cup. You have to be in the next round, and we are there. He may be right, making it to the next stage is the most important thing, but Van Gaal knows very well with a performance like that, Manchester United will not win the FA Cup or any trophies this season. Uh, okay, so they won, and, and Louis van Gaal is right when he said we won, we're through. 
But something's not working, and we've seen it in the Premier League, and we're seeing it here against a third division team, let's remember. I think it's working very well, because we see the same match United every week, so at least we, we, you know, we know what Van Gaal philosophy and is. Consistent. Keep, consistent. keep the shape, yeah. And, you know, the players, they, they, it's like watching, you know, uh, 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 table f- uh, football, you know. Uh, it's this, they are so n- not mobile, not, they don't have any creativity. It's really so boring and so, th- their the performance are dreadful and it's week after week. They had last 10 games at home. The, all the, the, the results at halftime were nil, 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 nil. O- only one exception was Norwich scored and led w- one nil. So... You know, they, they keep shape and then Memphis come off the bench and it seems like he doesn't listen to his coach and goes forward and the crowd likes it. Um, it's it's bad for, for Manchester United, for the image. We must remember, you know, it's not only a football club, a football team. It's much bigger than that. It's it's a big brand, you know, worth more than a billion dollars nowadays. And they have Adidas play, pay a 700 million How uh, long will pound. they keep paying so, for such so a brand? Exactly. They cannot deal, with, they cannot agree to such a dreadful performance and such boring, you know, people from all around the world are sitting and watching this team and they just week after week getting this, you know, it's boring and, and, and you have to wonder if Van Gaal, you know, finish the season because the feeling I get is they only wait now to one or two bad results to, to maybe get rid of him and appoint Ryan Giggs till the end of the season. That's why I understand is very possible. Who would have believed this is the great Manchester United? And as Louis van Gaal said, there is something good to say about Manchester United, and that is the fact they qualified. It's more than can be said about Liverpool, who was unable to beat fourth division Exeter and will host the replay next week. Michael Friedman with a story. Jurgen Klopp's Liverpool travel to fourth tier side Exeter in the third round of the FA Cup. With the red squad depleted with injuries, the home team found the net early on as Josh Reed passed the ball through the box to Tom Nichols, who easily scored to give Exeter an early 1 0 lead. The fans were ecstatic, and Nichols had a huge smile on his face after scoring such a massive goal in his career. But Liverpool would be resilient just minutes later as Exeter's defense broke down with the ball bouncing around in the middle of the box for Jerome Sinclair to punish the home squad and even the score. Klopp and the Red supporters watched on in hope of preventing an embarrassing loss. Just prior to the end of the first half, Lee Holmes took a remarkable corner kick to shock the keeper and provide a 2-1 lead heading into halftime. It was truly a wonder kick to leave the goalkeeper with disbelief. Although Exeter looked to capture a historic win over Liverpool, Brad Smith would capitalize in the 73rd minute to tie the match. The game finished 2-2 with a replay match set up in Liverpool on January 19th as Exeter will get another chance under the lights at Anfield to create third round history. Michael, Jurgen Klopp may have hundreds of excuses and yet there cannot be a chance where Exeter uh, Liverpool cannot beat Exeter, period. Should never happen. No, should never happen. And yes, Jurgen Klopp and inherited, you know, a, a terrible team that was with problems and injuries, but it doesn't matter. You have still with second-class players better than an Exeter team. So this should never happen. There's no excuse for it. They sh- they, they're barely even lucky to have gone through with a draw. So when it comes to Anfield, they better win. Yeah, they'll probably be through and yet. But there's there's always this drama, the, you know, the FA Cup, they always give some excitement for, for some bottom tier team to, to rise ahead and Liverpool can face some miser- misery soon. And, and if this game would have gone to penalties, it would have been much more dramatic than a replay in Enfield. Exeter forcing a replay with Liverpool is certainly a surprise, but there was an even bigger upset. Fourth division, Oxford United knocked out Premier League side Swansea, beating the team from Wales 3-2. They may have they may have a history in the top division, and they also won the League Cup 30 years ago, but they've since dropped through the divisions, even playing non-league football at times. This is one of their best achievements in recent years. Everton, Watford, and West Ham are all through to the fourth round, and so is Chelsea, who had no problems beating third division Scunthorpe United 2-0. I mean, this was, of course, no real challenge for uh, Chelsea, but now with a month, nearly a month with Jose Dinke in, and when they have PSG in a month, do we see any change in this team? 
Well, we see the problems, you know, we thought that after Mourinho gone, we thought the problems he had with the dressing room and his relations with the relationship with the players. We thought it would get much better, but so far we don't see the improvement maybe we, we thought we would see. Um, yeah, Chelsea looks better. Diego Costa, you know, is now uh, much more prolific, four goals in his last three games. And... Uh, you know, Oscar, you see some improvements, but it's not; they are not major. So, um, I don't know. I don't see them, you know, qualifying against the PSG, which you know, very good PSG side. They, you know, and they don't have the the challenge of the league as well as Chelsea has. So, yeah, but but uh, I think they need to think what they're going to do in the summer. Um, they need to reshuffle a little bit, maybe change. You know, even now in January, they are, they will bring, I think, a striker, Carlos Baca, maybe from Milan or a lot of a lot of things. A lot yeah, but but they need, I think, the midfield area. A lot of things to look need for. Need more the quality summer. and more. I'm Clemental, Michael Friedman. Thank you very much. See you again tomorrow. Join us again for our Tuesday show tomorrow when we look at all the action from Spain and Italy. Till then, thank you for watching. Bye bye.